All right, so should we move over to some O.J. Howard? Yeah, well, I mean, again, a lot of people will point to the fact of Arians not using a tight end, but part of what Arians, while digging into this, was like, listen, I'm going to use the good guys that I have. Like, I'm not, it's not, I don't don't really care who's good where. I'm going to draw up stuff to make, to use my best players. And OJ Howard is one of your best players. You see him playing all over the field already. So now you got a mismatch with Bruce Arians. He's going to use, it's not like, oh, well, you know what? I don't use the tight end. So OJ, sorry, Sorry. bud. Sorry, OJ. Sorry. Sorry. You got this absolute monster who has been just a yard after catch machine. Yeah. And, if he could just stay healthy, he's just I just going back and watching, you know, a good handful of catches from last year. I probably watched, you know, I don't know, 20 catches from from O.J. Howard last night and just straight up beasting people like sure. he's he I think he's getting better at using his physicality to get open like mm-hmm. he's he's done a really good job of when he's he's making his cuts. He's using his big, strong body to shield guys off go up and make the play, and then we all know what he can do in the open field. Like Alabama, when he was on there, it was nothing but big plays, and it's what he can turn any play into a big play. Like, good luck tackling that guy when he's rumbling. Well, yeah, I mean, it, obviously it takes... And he's real fast. It takes a young tight end a while to get in there and figure out the NFL game, but even as a rookie, when he, as soon as the ball hit his hands, you were like, whoa, there's O.J. Howard. Yeah. And then last year it was like, whoa, O.J. Howard's even better. He's taking a step forward and he got hurt, but before that it was electric every time he touched the ball, and he just, he he did, he, he showed you the improvement that you wanted to see in the second year obviously you know a broken foot or whatever it was you just hate to see that but it is football and i'm, I'm not ready to just say this dude's injury prone i'm i'm he's injured he's he's been on the injured reserve his first two years i, I, I know that's, but the, I'm that's just, the bummer thing exactly that's, that's a bump that's the only thing you can say that you haven't been extremely excited to see out of oj's nfl career so far right and i mean the bucks are going from a team that were like nobody was really excited about to now people are legit getting excited about what could be going on there at least offensively for the bucks well it took i mean that you had the pieces there yeah and and even last i mean last year obviously ryan fitzpatrick is wild and crazy and you know they don't call him fitz magic for nothing like those first four games he was leading the league and passing and it's not because he was just chucking it up deep to anybody he was throwing it to mike evans and deshaun jackson and chris godwin was sprinkled in there a little bit oj howard was making play they got some Top to bottom, obviously, Deshaun Jackson left, but you got Mike Evans and O.J. Howard. Those are two of the biggest freaks in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I would say O.J. Howard's a little more athletic than Mike Evans, but Mike Evans with his body control, and if the ball gets close to him, he's Alshon Jeffrey in that thing. Like, And now you got – and Chris Godwin's coming around. You know what I mean? Like, they got weapons. They got superb talent weapons. Right. And if – I mean, you could put O.J. Howard on the outside and Godwin in the slot. No doubt. Well, yeah. You you see Howard lined up out wide like a fair amount. Like, he's too fast for linebackers, and he's way too big and strong for DBs to cover him. And he's got great body control, and the hands are pretty good. He did have two drops out of 36 uh, catchable balls, which is a 5.1% drop rate. Uh, It's not great, but whatever. I don't uh, care. Yeah, no, I don't care. Well, he, he's <laughs> to to get his hands stronger. He's like flipping fifty five pound round weights and catching them. Like that's what who's his, doing that? OJ Howard. Jesus. Yeah. That seems dang, you like you might you might dislocate a digit. You might want to pump the like, brakes on. I for sure will. Your foot. Foot. Maybe maybe Jeez. just squeeze some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you do whatever you want to do, uh, Otarius Jabari Howard. Yeah. So obviously, it kind of after the big kind of three tight ends, it's pretty up in the air on if you're an OJ guy, if you're a Hunter Henry guy, if you're Ingram, I would Joku. I would put Joko at the bottom of those guys personally, but nobody I don't really have an answer right this minute. I mean, it's something that once I'm diving into my rankings, I'll I'll be able to sort that out a little bit right now. He's the fourth tight end on DLF ADP. I think it's I think it's hard to deny OJ Howard his Sorry, due. Evan Ingram's the fourth. Uh, Howard's fifth. I think Ingram's in line for a really good season this year. I think but it's overall. Hard, I think it's hard to not see the dots connect for when Evan Ingram's on the field and and you know no OBJ and yeah. now obviously OBJ's not he's not coming back he's gone. Right. So like you got Golden Tate and Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram's the biggest most athletic receiver on the team and so I think it's hard to not see the potential volume for Evan Ingram. But 
I it, I I would be a coin flip on either one of those dynasty assets. Right. Obviously, I I like if I had to plug in a one week one to say what's up, I'd probably plug in Evan Ingram, but I would have no problem taking OJ Howard over Nev, Evan Ingram and you know backfilling it with Jared Cook or something yeah. just because I think the upside on OJ Howard is I think ridiculous. O, I think he's got the most potential of being just the, a f- filthy monster. Agreed. I think the potential <laughs> is the f- filthy monster potential is solid. And but Evan Ingram's right one A one B because he is Evan Ingram's nasty too. He's just not OJ Howard nasty. Yeah. But I think his volume is, is different. a little. It's a different I think his floor is a lot higher week to week past attempts. Like you know Agreed. what I mean? Like targets. I think it's easy I for think, a one week window. I think Evan or one year window. Right right, right now where the where the Giants are built, it's sure. it's easy to to give Evan Ingram the nod to have maybe the the most productive year out of all those guys. Agreed. I mean, Joku's a filthy monster in his own right. Oh, if if you, th- I think maybe just physical specimen potential athleticism coming together on a football field. He's right there within it. Maybe he's at the top of those guys. Maybe yeah. not out. Maybe maybe not over OJ, but he definitely physically gifted. Mm-hmm. Probably mo- more than Hunter Henry and, and and Evan Ingram. But I'd put him at the bottom of the list, like you said, just from the. Especially you bring in Od- Odell Beckham, and you still got Jarvis Landry, who can be a target hog, and move and, back and, to the slot, and all the the all Antonio the running Callaway's backs can still catch. there. Higgins is still Higgins there. Higgins is still there. Callaway could be getting better. Obviously, we expect Duke Johnson to leave, but it's the Browns, and and Hunt's suspended for half the season because it's a smart move for the Browns to hang on to Duke Johnson at least ride him up to the trade deadline. Because what if Chubb gets hurt? You never know. I'm, yeah. I'm I don't hate the Browns for not trading Ch- Duke mm-hmm. Johnson. I think it's a great football move to hold. I don't dislike the player Najoku. I just or no, Joku, just however you want to say. I just, uh, I'm I, when I'm drafting these guys, he's the last one that he's, I'm. I taking. think he's got to be if you just put the dots together. You just brought in Odell, but you just brought in one of the best receivers in the league. Yeah, you know, and you still got all the guys that were there that caught, they got targets around him last year, right. and you just brought in an alpha dog receiver. I, I just don't see how Njoku can like it's op, it's the opposite pecking order that Evan Ingram's got, and you got Bruce Arians on over here, maybe about to dial it up for. You know these guys. Mike oh, Evans, I'm extremely excited about what he's about to dial up for OJ. Howard. I hope so. I mean, I yeah, you could make the case that would that the is similar uh, things going on with the Bucks, but I don't think the secondary pieces there are as strong as what the Browns no, have. No, not from top to bottom. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I probably like Baker Mayfield way more than Jameis at this point, but I yeah, just I mean that doesn't change you, anything for me though. Why not? There's still the whole other laundry list of human beings that he could throw it to. Yeah, but who's going to be wide open like all the time? And Joe OJ Howard. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I I can't I can't argue against OJ Howard, but I want to take it to the Joku train, so I'm gonna I f- buy it. I find myself in. taking OJ Howard over all those guys. I do really like Hunter Henry. Um, I think I do. I have a um loosely if I have a. Strong, loose leaf. strong case building for Hunter Henry. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there at some point. Um, loose leaf, Hunter Henry. He's obviously not the, the the physical player that those guys are, but he's he's got it all right up in the dome piece. Mm-hmm. And and a guy who's always seeking a player like Hunter Henry and Philip Rivers. Sure. So, all right. Well, that'll wrap up OJ Howard. Yeah, I don't know how much OJ Howard we really talked there, but 